Russian Air Force. In the last nine months, it has become our nightmare. Not just for our soldiers on the front line, but for every Ukrainian civilian, in every, even the most remote corner of the country. When we are told that 295 and 2160 strategic bombers are in flight over the Caspian Sea, we know that another missile attack is soon to begin, followed by power, heat, and water outages. When we hear that bombers took off from the Russian Shaikovka Air Base, we know that it's time to seek shelter. When we read messages about Russian MiG-31 kiloseconds taking off from the Belarusian Machulishchi airfield, we expect an air raid alarm, as those are capable of carrying missiles. Until today, this nightmare had an exclusively male face. In one of our previous videos, we told you about the pilots from Shaikovka. They were the ones launching missiles on Kremenchik in summer. Stories about Russian military pilots can be found in numerous journalistic investigations and OSINT studies. And all these stories are about male pilots. For decades, Russian army only allowed men to pilot bombers, fighters, and even cargo planes. Until today. It all changed in October, when the Krasnodar Higher Military Aviation School, for the first time in its history, produced the first female pilot graduates. Preventing ironic sexist comments. No, that's not the case when they got the diploma. And then went on to, I don't know, work in a manicure salon. In this school, female cadets, same as male ones, are sworn in during their first year to strictly comply with military regulations, orders of commanders and superiors. During their second year, they sign contracts. On the fifth, they get practice, including in active air squadrons. After graduating, they are assigned to military units, where they go with ambitious plans to develop their military careers. My plans for the nearest future? I want to get third class as soon as I can, then second class. Most importantly, to readily obey orders, whatever those may be. Whatever my country says, I'll do it, I'm ready for my duty. The Russians are proud of their first female military pilots and shows them off a lot. They were even compared to the legendary night witches, Soviet female pilots who bombed enemy forces and various enemy military facilities during World War II. There's bitter historic irony is that there were Ukrainians among those brave girls who fought against the Nazi invaders. On the other hand, these girls have having sworn allegiance to their own Hitler, Putin, will board their planes to fulfill his perverse dream of occupying Ukraine and Ukrainians. So, who are they, these new witches of Putin? We'll tell you that in a couple of seconds, but first check if you've subscribed to this channel. Still haven't? You may miss lots of interesting stuff. Already subscribed? All good then. Now, let's go, or, more fittingly, fly onward. In 2017, Russian Defense Minister Shaigu decided to conduct an experiment. The Krasnodar Military Aviation School accepts girls for the first time. 16 female cadets take the oath. At first, it was planned that all they would be studying military transport aviation, but the plans changed in several years, and the young women received combat pilot training. Of course, it was wrapped in a very flashy and dramatic package. In 2019, during Putin's direct line, which is a sort of an annual press conference, the young women, allegedly on their own initiative, asked Putin to change their specialization, and he was forced to fulfill the dream of the cadets. Are we going to have the opportunity to master some other kinds of aircraft, aside from military transport ones, such as fighters or close air support? 
I think we'll manage it no worse than men do. I think your amazing beautiful braid will fit into the helmet. I see no other limitations. Since then, cadets of this and other female enrollees were able to choose between a combat and a cargo plane, same as the boys. Only a couple of the female alumni were filmed during the graduation ceremony. However, thanks to the photos from the event, we were able to identify the entire first enrollment. Aside from the oath, the girls also gave a sort of a pledge to study well and use the acquired knowledge for, quote, the protection and prosperity of the great Russia. And everyone signed the pledge. You can see it held by one of the cadets. This is the commander of the all-female group. Simply put, the class head, Yekaterina Zakosheskaya. We'll start with her. In the future, Yekaterina Zakosheskaya will be the first female pilot of long-range aircraft in the modern history of the Russian Air Force. For over three months, she has been on a military internship in the Tombov Aviation Regiment. Yekaterina Zakoshheskaya Ne Pisihela, 27 years old, Angles, the star of all news and articles about the Krasnodar female pilots, not least because she's from a military family, and a special one at that. Her father, Oleg Pisihela, is a general major in the Air Force, a sniper pilot, the highest category for a military pilot in Russia. Her dad's positing as high too, commander of the Long Range Aviation Division in Angles. Yeah, in the same angles, where Russia now collects several dozen bombers, and arms them with missiles for another strike on Ukraine. As an exception, her father presented her the education diploma. My father approached to give me the diploma. The emotions were strong and unexpected. Yeah, I know what you'd say, she's a general's daughter, they won't send her to the front line, she'll stay at home playing with planes. In a way, this is true, because she doesn't need to go to the front line. She will play with planes Russia uses to bomb our cities. While staying in her native airspace, Katya went in her father's footsteps, that is, to long-range aviation. So what is it? During the Soviet times, the task of the long rangers was to strike targets deep behind enemy lines. You get in, bombed an important facility, and return. Today, long-range aviation mostly bombs from afar. We've all seen how it works in person. This is the aviation that fires missiles at us, from the airspace of Shaikovka and the Caspian Sea. The Long Rangers operate strategic bombers, of the Tupolev family, 2160, 295, 222M. They can carry aerial bombs. Tupolevs were used to drop Fab 3000 on Azovstal. Also, cruise missiles. The same planes are used for long-range strikes. On Kyiv, Lviv, Odessa, and other Ukrainian cities. PC Hela Sr. flies a Tu-160. Guess which plane Katya is being trained for? In an interview, she said that her dream was the White Swan. That's how the pilots endearingly call the Tu-160 missile carrying bomber. I saw this plane, its wingspan, and that was it, it's in my dream, in my heart. This year, the girl began training on a trainer plane, which is used in Russia to train pilots for Tu-160 and Tu-22M. Curiously, Katya considers strategic bombers to be a very feminine work. I think, long-range aviation is most suitable for girls, because the military transport one has constant long business trips, fighter and close air support. You belong neither to yourself nor your family, while long-range aviation, yes, there are long flights, but they are at home. And this is important for a young woman. As any normal young woman, I want a family, kids. This is what humanity was created for. And strategic bombers, Katya, were created to kill people, including children, at least that's what your army thinks, Katya, when your cherished Tu-160 fires KH-101 missiles at residential houses and kindergartens, like it was in Kyiv in June.
But these events don't spark any conflict in Katya's brain, because political education of children must be on a decent level in the family of a Russian general. It's rather simple. Don't turn your brains on. Putin said, we must, the army said, we can. No moral dilemmas or guilt trips. So, when before the full-scale invasion, the same Russian, long rangers, were bombing, let's say, Syria. I'm proud of how our guys perform there. They are real heroes, exemplary ones. Don't worry, their hand won't twitch. This means that the next time, white swans fly over the Caspian Sea to fire cruise missiles at us. At the helm of one of the planes, may very well be Katya Zakoshheskaya, smiling dreamily. By the way, Katya's husband is also a future military pilot. He studies at the same aviation school. Here they are together during a drill. And here he is at the diploma ceremony, beside her father. Yevgeny Zakoshhesky, 25 years old, several years younger, so he hadn't chosen a specialization yet. According to Katya, he is likely to follow her footsteps. Where I go, my husband will follow. After all, it's so much fun, all together, as a happy family, to launch cruise missiles at the neighboring country, on the orders of the bunker madman. Missiles explode in our cities. Your anger explodes in the comment section. Do you know what also explodes a lot now? The cars of our defenders. Reconnaissance of 112th TDF Brigade ask our help with repairs. Their cars break down one after another. But these guys don't treat them as disposable. Repairing them while it's possible. Squeezing everything they can from the equipment. They have exhausted the ability to fund the repairs on their own. So let's help them. The QR code for the jar is on the screen. Its requisites are in the description. What do I want? To continue serving, flying planes. Whatever my country tells me, I will do. I'm ready to perform my tasks. Another this year's alumni, Anna Sherbakova. Her blissful comment about doing everything she's told isn't just a go-getter attitude of a first-year student from 2017. The report by Rossiya One Channel is fresh, it was filmed in May 2022, when the full-scale Russo-Ukrainian war was in full swing, and Anna was finishing her last year at the aviation school, and was preparing for her service in the Russian army, and not just anywhere, but in close air support. Same as her co-ed Katya, Anna didn't randomly end up flying a military plane, and not just for the fun of it. Sherbakova is 24 years old, she's from Perm, and also from a military family. Her father, Alexander Sherbakov, is a retired colonel, a military builder, while her brother Sergei, at least until recently, served in the strategic missile forces. That's nuclear ICBMs, just in case. Thus, it's not a coincidence that her brother is very classified, and this childhood photo on social media is the only one of his that we could find. So, since childhood, Sherbakova decided to continue the legacy. She didn't enter the Krasnodar Aviation School on the first time. They had places for 15 girls only, and she was one point short. But she was stubborn, and this story has already been worn through to the bone by all Russian media. Anna wrote a letter to Defense Minister Shaigu. He was impressed by the young woman's persistence, and she was accepted as the 16th girl. It's not clear why Anna chose close air support, but she passed the qualification, got a specialization. And about now she's supposed to be getting comfy, at a Russian combat unit, or already flying combat missions. In November, the girl is up for assignment, her dreams have reached a new altitude, to take her place at the helm of a combat Su-25. Either five years of drills at a military school, or family traditions or the general background, of Russian army propaganda, or all that at the same time, made our of Anna the same kind of a detached lunatic, as of Zakoshheskaya. At least, that's the impression you get, after watching a couple of reports, about this new pride of Russian aviation, the feral aggression of the Kadyrovites, and the drunk impetus of the Russian VDV, don't scare as much as Anna's glassy eyes, and her detached reflections about the beauty of the sky. 
Yeah, we understand that a soon-to-be Russian lieutenant, even if she wanted to, couldn't say anything like, no to war, in front of a camera. It's just Anna, who is as dreamy as Katya, doesn't seem to be aware of the nature of this bloody and ruthless war that her country is waging. A perfect killing machine. Of course, I don't regret my choice. How can you regret that? M2 Ala Samkova already got assigned to a military transport vehicle. My plans for the nearest future? I want to get third class as soon as I can, then second class. Ala Samkova, 22 years old, the same cadet who asked Putin to allow girls to fly combat planes back in 2019. In various interviews, she told that she wanted to operate long-range aviation, like Zakosh Heskaya, but eventually changed her mind and went for the military transport one. She successfully qualified, and right after graduation she was made a plane commander. Don't get lulled by the word, transport. It doesn't sound as threatening as a bomber or a fighter but military transport aviation doesn't carry cucumbers. It transports weapons and soldiers, among other things. When during the first day of the full-scale invasion, the Russians planned to drop troops and vehicles near Kyiv with 20 Il-76 transport planes, it was also military transport aviation. When giant transport Antonov planes fly from Russia to Belarus, carrying Iskander missiles, and even entire rocket systems like Tachka U, and maybe even something worse, as not everything gets identified, that's also military transport aviation. Thus, the girls that will perform combat tasks on transport ILs and ANs will be as involved in the Russian military aggression against Ukraine as those that will pilot combat MiGs, SUS and TUS. Performing combat tasks in the army doesn't scare Samkova. Far from it, she's determined to have a military career. I'd want to reach a high rank and do something very useful for my country. We didn't enter this school for nothing. By the way, that promise of Allah's to be useful to Russia sounds strange considering that Russia isn't really her country. Her country was torn by Russia in two. In numerous articles, you can read that Allah went to study in Krasnodar from St. Petersburg, but in reality, she is from Moldova. To be precise, from Benderi, the city controlled by the PMR, a self-proclaimed Russia-controlled quasi-entity, the Pridnestrovian Moldavian Republic. On social media of Allah's father, you can find this strange picture. In the comments are congratulations with Special Forces Day, and the patch says, O-B-R-O-N Dnester. This the separate Special Forces Brigade of the PMR, it was created during the Transnistria conflict. In short, her daddy is a Moldovan pro-Russian separatist. What kind of patriotic values and political views could he have planted in his daughter's mind? Most likely something along, Russia ruined our country. Help her ruin another one, my daughter. Pretty reasonable, right? However, reason is the last thing you need to look for, in the words and deeds, of the Krasnodarsk Aviation School alumni. For example, Polina Onyeva, 23 years old, from the Khitan village, Irkutska region. She sincerely believes, that she is going to the army to protect someone. There's a profession, to protect one's homeland, that's what I want to do. It is my well-considered decision. Many times, I imagined, what if there's war tomorrow? I am ready to obey my commander's orders. My dream is fighter aviation. Polina, you're going to the Russian army. It doesn't defend anyone. It just attacks everyone around. Okay, to be fair, that quote was from 2017. That's before the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. But it's the fourth year of the war in the Donbass, and the occupation of Crimea. The war isn't tomorrow, Polina. The war was right under your nose already back then. Do they even have history on the curriculum? At that sorry excuse for a school in Krasnodar? Afghanistan, Chechnya, Georgia, Syria? At least ask your co-ed Samkova about Transnistria. Oh well, she'll probably say they were protecting someone as well. Another co-ed Valeria Abdulina from Belgorod, she believes in the elite nature and a high mission of the Russian army. Her father, also a military man, gave her these nonsense ideas.
I've been dreaming about the army since around sixth grade, and I can't imagine myself as a civilian. This ambition was instilled in me by my father, who served as a technician in military aviation. He said that even though the days in the army are alike, this life is still much more interesting and fulfilling than that of civilians. And when you serve your country, you understand that all your actions are meaningful. What do you think? How many combat missions in Ukraine it will take for Valeria to realize that there's no meaning in the actions of her atrocious army and there never will be? Write your options in the comments. That's just the first graduation, and there are around 50 future female pilots, breathing down their necks. Shaigu was satisfied with his experiment, and since then, every year, the Krasnodar Aviation School, has been enrolling 15 girls at a time. More and more of them choose combat planes. Next year, at least five female cadets may graduate as fighter pilots. They're already getting tattoos. Starting from spring, the cadets are being conditioned for war. Rallies in support of the so-called special military operation are held at the aviation school. They preach about the feats of pilots who fight against Ukraine and their graduation speech made by Shaigu. Of course, couldn't happen without the usual scares about the, the rising Nazism that threatens their homeland. Well, in that case, let's join in on the greetings. Let's wish the fresh from the oven female pilots, and well as their male counterparts, to have one less landing than takeoff during this war. Thank you for watching till the end and extra thanks for your likes. As you may know, they do indeed help us to make more people see our videos about Russian criminals. By the way, not just about Russian ones, I invite you to watch our new video, by my colleague Nastia Yusenko, who looked into the working of Belarusian propaganda. The link is on screen now. I promise you, it's worth it. See you.